Hey friends, Angie here, your teen librarian, hanging out in the beautiful Claire's Courtyard, to walk you through another edition of Teen Art Club. I'm particularly excited about this week's art club because it incorporates a bunch of my favorite things. Uh, decorating my house, wall art, and making things with stuff we find in nature. Um, for this particular one, we're focusing on sticks. So I went on a nice long walk in the park and collected some gorgeous sticks. I found one stick that was so cool, it was as tall as I was, and uh, that was the foundation of this. And then I went back and collected smaller sticks so we can hang them at varying levels to create a shape. I chose a heart, um, and so basically what you're going to want to do is collect your sticks. That's your first step after you've decided what you want to do, and like the sizing. Your big stick will really determine how big your project is going to be overall. Since my stick was as tall as I was, uh, it's a nice five foot four, five foot five ish. <laughs> uh, I, I needed to get a good amount of sticks to kind of balance that out. So, a little hot tip here for you when you think you have enough sticks, keep collecting, because if you're anything like me, you did not grab enough sticks. Uh, and then, once you have all your sticks, this is an important step that you're not going to want to skip, even though it might feel tedious at the time, is you're going to want to wash them. You're going to get all that dirt and grime and excess bark that's starting to peel off of them so that when you paint them, um, the paint will stick to the wood and not the dirt. Uh, your brushes hopefully won't get all gummy from it. Uh, so step two is going to be to find a large piece of cardboard that's going to be big enough for your design. You're going to draw the basic outline. Mine was heart. This is heart. Um, and then you're going to lay your larger stick above it and kind of like decide how that's going to sit, how that's going to lay, and then fill in your shape with your sticks, your smaller sticks that are all now bright and clean and washed and dry, and assemble them into that shape. Uh, the next step is to secure them how you want them, tie them into place, and I use twine. You have other options for what you use. I really liked twine because it was low cost, it fit the rustic look I was going for, and um, it's something I can use for multiple crafts to come. So you'll probably be seeing that in some future crafts. And you wanna tie your sticks at their appropriate levels to your larger stick to create your shape. Um, after a few different tries, I decided that the easiest thing um, from my perspective to do was to, um, instead of tying them each individually, which was time consuming and I felt like I, my shape got moved around a lot when I was doing that, was to tie all the twine onto my large stick and then go back and secure it to my, my smaller sticks to make sure that they were hanging on their right. And it helped everything stay in place a little bit better and helped my, uh, my stress level go down. The final step, which is a little bit of a longer step, is to paint it. Um, and this is an optional step, you don't have to paint it if you really love the wood tones, which are gorgeous all on their own. Um, but I chose to do an ombre paint type situation, so I did three different shades. Um, I did a red, a pink, and then a very light whitish pink, uh, and um, did them from lightest to darkest. and that was a little more time consuming because again that paint has to dry and you really want to make sure that you're not skipping the backs it took me i tried to get away with just painting the one side but when you pick it up and hang it your sticks are not going to hang like they lay is an important thing to remember that, <laughs> that as sticks are not uniform shapes are not you know going to be it didn't hang quite like a heart um, it still is heart-esque and I love it and I'm so happy with it and it's going to be a part of my home decor forever but um, yeah paint all the sides because otherwise you're gonna wind up with it not being that uniform look and while overall it is not the most uniform looking piece it is at least all painted um, I chose to only paint mine from like if you had dipped the heart into paint so the tops of it are still the various wood tones and I'm really happy with how it came out. Um, what I really love about this craft is that it is also something that you can do and redo. You can do different shapes, you can do different materials. 
Uh, it is a gift you can give. It is a gift you can give to yourself. And it's just a really fun thing you can do. Uh, holiday season is coming up, and so this craft is a perfect thing to make for someone. It is low cost, high appeal. It is also high on the time investment, so that's always a good thing. Struggling with the knots here. Mm -hmm. Got a piece of real fumble fingers today. And take time to see how that's all looking. Put my knot to. Let's see if they can switch this. See, this knot's here, and this one's up here, so they are causing some differences. So we're just going to. sure we're staying within our outline. There's two. <laughs> there <we go. laughs> There's three. So I think I'm going to pause this now and come back when I've done more. So stay tuned for the follow-up. So today we paint. Got my three colors to ombre it with. Start at the base and work our way up.
so yeah i would really love to see if you guys make these if you would show us i want to see all your creativity so looking forward to seeing what you guys make we'll see you at the library